Hi there, Victor Pross speaking to you, anarchist artist, a late night musing. Philosophical musing, I guess you'd say. Well, the world is hinging on a paradigm shift. With the uh, world economies collapsing, swarms of people are now more and more open than ever before to listen to uh, alternative viewpoints instead of the tired, blood-drenched uh, status quo. And this is where the intellectual leadership steps up to the challenge. And I am speaking of, of course, of those outspoken libertarians and anarchists. Have the mantle of responsibility, or have took to the responsibility, at least, of uh, spreading ideas. And I think that, uh, that the hope for a better world lies in, lies in bridging the philosophical breach between uh, the people and um, the intellectuals. And by intellectuals I mean those whose profession or vocation lies within the humanities, the social sciences, education, or the arts for that matter. That would include me in that latter category. And uh, by the people I mean uh, the, the rest in a given geographical area called society. You know, that includes uh, scientists and uh, businessmen, all walks of life is what I mean by the people. Now, when uh, I've studied intellectual history under Professor John Redpath, objectivist Professor John Redpath, and I found in those classes that all ethical systems that that achieved any degree of world influence were at root variations on the uh, the theme of self-sacrifice and collectivism, where the individual is nothing to the group or nothing to a higher power, allegedly could be God or, or what have you. And um, to be a sacrificial lamb, as it were, uh, in sacrificial service to some allegedly higher value, that, like I say, could have been God or the emperor or king or society or the state or the race or the proletarian or, or these days, you know, the frickin' ecology. <laughs> now we're... Uh, to uh, sacrifice human interest in the name of, uh, of the intrinsic value of ecology, so it just gets more whacked out as the uh, as time moves along with uh, modernism and postmodernism from med medievalism. So, in all the plans uh, to redistribute the wealth that we've ever heard and will continue to hear that we hear to this freaking day, and the endless debates which we hear about whose need is greater than whose and who should have the first claim to someone's property and the countless schemes for the enslavement of human beings in the name of the public good, there are certain questions that nobody cares to really ask. And one such question would be who produces the wealth? A lot of people just intend to think that wealth is just like some, you know, was bestowed to us by nature or something. And, you know, the goods are just here. Now it's just a question of how to uh, allocate the, the resources. And, uh, but if we were to ask the question, who produces the wealth, the answer that comes is people of ability. And uh, what human faculty makes production possible? That would be reason. And what conditions of existence makes wealth possible. Freedom. So it's the freedom of the individual to use his capacity to reason and to act on his conclusions so long as he doesn't violate the rights of another human being. That condition is freedom. All of this reason and the condition of freedom brings prosperity. So anarcho-capitalism is the only social system that's based on the recognition of uh, individual rights or natural rights or self-ownership or the non-aggression principle uh, is in there, of course. And therefore, based on all of this, it's the only system that bans force from social relationships on principle as a philosophical, ethical idea. So it is the ethic to which upon all the the uh, economy uh, economic theories of capitalism of a free markets and so forth all of that rests on 
on an ethical foundation of, uh, of individualism. That is the hierarchy of knowledge. Ethics, then politics as a consequence. Inspector Pross signing out. Thank you for listening, and pop goes the culture.